Today we're going to be looking at geocaching. Geocaching is a weird little niche community where people hide storage containers called caches all over the world. The location of these caches are posted online on the geocaching app and they're usually filled with little trinkets that people go and find. Here's what the official app looks like. As you can see, there's little green newts that you click on. This one's called Perry's Mailbox. So I guess Perry has a little pipe bomb in the mail that you go and find. If you go online, you'll see some really epic geocaches. Ones where there's like hidden caches in like phone boxes and light poles and other ones where you do cool puzzles to get the cache. But unfortunately, the ones around in my area are just flaccid letdowns. My area is filled with these things called micro caches. The caches are essentially mini suppository little tic tac things. They look like suppositories, like something that was put up my ass as a kid when I was constipated. So in today's video, I'm gonna be making my own geocache from scratch. So here's the footage of me from three months ago making the cache because I forgot to record an intro for this video. I'm gonna make my own cache with this big fuck off log. I want to preface, I don't have any woodworking experience. The uh, little that I do was uh, in the 10th grade when we were forced to do woodworking. I made a stool. Look, I still got it here. This is what I made. I made a stool. This is uh, all I have to show for five years of uh, secondary woodworking education. There's still some pencil marks where I couldn't be fucked to rub it off. Uh, this took me maybe a whole semester to make, you know, like six weeks. I spent half the time playing cool maths games in the uh, computer room. And then the other remaining time was spent defacing other kids' uh, pr projects, hitting them with rulers and uh, drawing hate symbols on them. I'm gonna discuss my plan with this log. I wanna cut like that much off or something to have like a lid that's hinged. I bought a lot of I bought a lot of goodies to aid me. We got stuff like this. We got we got padlocks. Got everything here. Ruler, metal ruler. That's metal. This thing, more chisels. A big nail filer. I don't know what this does, but it looked cool, so I picked it up. A handsaw. You know, this is only scratching the iceberg. I've got plenty of stuff back in the shed that I can use. Inside, this thing's going to be in there. I'm going to be putting my knickknacks in there. My little trinkets to protect it from the environment. Because I've seen this, you've got to have it waterproof. The lid doesn't quite fit. That really upset me, but I spent like half the day trying to find a Tupperware lid that would work with this one. And this is the best I could get. There's a little gap. I'm gonna put a padlock on this somehow. I'm gonna drill like a hole through the lid and the body. They're gonna have to go to a link, which is a YouTube video, which gives them the code. That's like a bit of extracurricular activity for them, you know, makes the uh, destination even more sweeter when they get to it. Padlock's been solved. They open the lid off. Now they're here. This is gonna be locked. How are they gonna get in? Well, this thing is like a smaller version of those retractable leashes you see mums put their kids on. I'm gonna somehow embed this into the log on the side and a key is gonna be attached at the end. So you gotta pull the key out to unlock that. It's just like another another layer. I'm thinking maybe we're gonna put like a weight on the bottom or something, or chain it to something so someone doesn't steal it because this is the general public we're talking about. There are literal apes in the general public. I know if I put this somewhere, there is going to be someone who's going to try and take this thing. I know that that's probably what I would be doing if my mum huffed paint enamel while she was having me. I'd probably be going around with my phone like it was Pokemon Go and stealing all the geocaches. So I just know that there's some festering cretin out there that's probably going to do that. All right, we're outside. But I got my uh, safety gloves and safety glasses on because you know it's going to get wild out here. There's probably going to be a chicken hollering the entire time. It's out of my control. I beat it enough and it still makes that noise. And we're going to uh, be soaring. Soaring this whole log. I've only done like 10 seconds of soaring and it's immediately awful. It's really hot out here. I'm probably going to get like six melanomas just doing this. Thank fuck that's over. I've got the lid now. I've got moles now. I've got moles on my neck. All right, now that we've got the lid done, try and hollow out this area, which should be a lot of fun, I reckon. Then I'm gonna get this drill, this big boy. Big nub of a drill bit. I'm gonna drill as many holes as I can together, all the way down. Hopefully that can hollow it out. And then I could just chisel away all the remaining bits. All right, as you can see, I drilled a heap of holes. This was 
really fun and didn't take me forever to do it was a lot of fun all right as you can see it's finally flush look at that my hand feels like it's got cerebral palsy it's like in a claw formation got a little blister there we call those battle wounds uh battle scars in the geocache community now all i need to do is screw the lid on oh what's that it's just uh ordinary log sitting on the table oh wrong wrong look at that you haven't seen hinges like that look at this Oh, bet you feel real silly now thinking that was a real log. All right, so I got my log finished. I did a few more adjustments off camera that I uh, couldn't be bothered recording. All right, so first you open up the log and in here's the container, which you pull out. And as you can see, there is a code for a YouTube video that you must look at to uh, unlock these padlocks that are on either side. <laughs> I hope you enjoy exploring my geocache. Have a great day. All right, so once you've got the code and you unlock the padlocks, you take the lid off and look, there's another container. How exciting. But this one's locked. Oh no, what are you gonna do? Well, you're gonna use the key that's on this little retractable leash thing and you put it in and you unlock the box. I know it's hard to understand. And inside the box, oh, look at this. We've got some goodies in here. We've got two cans of beans. Those are like little party favors for the kids. Uh, there's a nice little photo of Uday Hussein there. And in there's the logbook. Logbooks are where you write a little message or your name or something to prove that you found it. And to authenticate mine, I've uh, written a few fake messages to make it seem like people have actually discovered this before. And for added security, I drilled a hole in the blog base and uh, put an Apple Air tag in that little hole and covered it up. So that way I know where the uh, log is at all time if some ape decides to come and steal it. Here you can see it's uh, synced up with my phone and it's called Log. Alright, so I sent this off to the Geocache website. Hopefully it gets approved. I think it will get approved because the bar of what does get approved is pretty fucking low. I mean, I saw a magnet with a post-it note get approved. So uh, I think I think our log's good. Alright, I got my bush gear on and we're going to drop the Geocache in the secret location. Yeah, that's good enough. It seems like we've got some competition around here, actually. As you can see, we've got a few geocaches in our area. So we might need to go check them out. All right, it took me all of five seconds to find, but I found it. It's one of those gross suppository ones. Can't even fit a Tic Tac in this thing. If this is the kind of competition we're gonna have, I'm gonna wipe the floor with these pathetic attempts at geocaching. All right, so I left the geocache out for a little over three months, and uh, in total we had 32 finds. So that's about an average of one find every three days, so I, th I think that's good. It only took three hours from the cache going live for someone to find it, and uh, immediately we had our first issue. People were struggling to type the URL on their phone. They seemed to be getting hung up on whether it was an i4 or an L4 or some shit like that. It was a bit of a calamity. It was ca causing a bit of confusion and delay. Here's someone said they spent half an hour on Google finding alternatives to the link. And another person said, I struggled to make out the URL, so spent ages swatting mozzies, trying possible combos for the last few characters. So as funny as the mental image was of someone spending well over half an hour in 30 degree weather in the bush trying to figure out a URL just to be presented by this video. <laughs> I decided I'd be merciful and turn the URL into a QR code that they could scan. But when I went to go change over the QR code, I noticed something awful had happened. First, I noticed that the beans had been taken, which was good. That was all part of the thing. I wanted people to find the beans. This was supposed to be a beans dispensary. I was very happy that people were taking the beans. I even got some nice kind words in the logbook. I love baked beans. Thank you. I'm now a Beans fan as well. But someone had taken it upon themselves to steal the big 4-in-1 pen that I'd left out for people to write in the logbook. I've spent the last three months racking my brain on what possesses someone to steal a big 4-in-1 pen from a geocache. So if you stole it and you're watching this, I hope something life-alteringly bad happens to you. So while I was changing the QR code and refilling the beans, I decided to treat some of my female fans. Being the strong advocate for feminine hygiene that I am, 
I decided to leave a little goodie box, a little surprise for the girls. I decided to leave a little Vaggie Seal care package. So now that the link was fixed and that people could just scan the QR code, I was expecting an influx of logs abusing me, wondering if I was developmentally challenged or anything. But no, I actually discovered that the geocaching community is actually pretty surprisingly wholesome. Everyone just seemed to ignore the video altogether. People instead were just praising me for my woodworking skills and how much time and effort would have gone into this cache. It's not like they couldn't have seen the video. You have to click on the link to get the code to get into the cache. My running theory is that the geocaching community is so deprived and starved of a natural good geocache that they choose to turn a blind eye to the weird shit that was going on. I feel so bad because there was a nice old lady who sent a little selfie of her finding the cache and I'm just picturing her pulling up the video on her iPhone and just looking and just looking at me screaming in her face. People were pretty good at maintaining the cache and putting it back to how it was, but unfortunately the second time I went to go check up on the cache, I found that someone had completely munted and destroyed the key mechanism. I don't know how someone managed this, but someone must have been giving it a good old tug because they absolutely decimated the internal mechanics of the lead. I would have appreciated it if the person left a comment saying, hey, I completely destroyed your thing, please come fix it. But I'm assuming they're probably mates with the guy who stole the fucking big pen. Also on that visit, I noticed that someone had actually taken the veggie seal. I hope, I hope a child did not take that. I hope that cured someone's yeast infection or thrush. However, during the final few weeks of the cashier's life, community engagement started to really drop. So I came up with the ingenious idea to reinvigorate community engagement with the communal teeth and toenail jar. I even put a few of my own contributions into the jar to get the ball rolling. Unfortunately, I might've been a bit too ahead of my time because uh, no one seemed to contribute. Again, no one seemed to acknowledge the jar's existence. People would just continue talking about how well crafted it was or how much they liked the puzzle. So overall, I think it was a success. It may have been a bit anticlimactic for the video. I mean, no one stole the cash. We didn't get any complaints. No one abused us. Instead, it was just very, very wholesome. So yeah. Ah!